You have your antenna connected and set up, but you just don't seem to be getting the signal strength you were hoping for. Uh oh! I'll show you how tuning your FM antenna the right way will give you more power and protect your transmitter in the process. <laughs> By the end of this video, you will know how to make your antenna resonate. Wow! The first thing you need is an SWR and power meter, oh. which shows the power coming out of the transmitter and the power coming back from the antenna into the transmitter. This is called forward and reflected power. Forward from the transmitter, reflected by the antenna. What you want is to have the maximum power going out the antenna and as little as possible coming back. The term SWR means standing wave ratio, which has a very technical explanation, but the simple explanation is that it's a ratio between the power of the transmitter signal and the signal coming back from your antenna. Oh. In theory, a one-to-one -one ratio means all of the signal is going out and nothing is coming back. This would be the perfect scenario. It can sometimes be difficult to achieve exactly a one-to-one -one ratio, so the aim is to get as close to one-to-one one as possible. Never leave it above 1 to 1.5 though. That means making this needle go as low as you can. The antenna needs to have the right length to match the wavelength of the transmitter signal. This is worked out with this equation. But instead of stretching your brain, simply click on the link in the description for the frequency wavelength calculator. This is to calculate a quarter wavelength, which is the standard length of a half-wave dipole and a quarter-wave antenna radiator. Other antennas, such as a 5.8, will have a different measurement as it does not work with quarter wavelengths. The same tuning method we will do can be used for a 5.8, but the calculation of the length of the antenna is different. When you are on this calculator page, simply put your transmitter frequency in here and select the wavelength. In this case, quarter wave. Then a frequency of 100 MHz gives a quarter wavelength of 74.945 cm or 29.507 inches. For a 5.8 antenna, it works out to be 73.768 inches or 187.371 cm. The most important part about buying an FM antenna is that it must not require you to cut the antenna. Oh my! Some cheap antenna sellers will give you an antenna that needs to be cut to the right length to match the transmitter frequency. This is very bad for three reasons. One, once you cut the antenna, you can't put the length back. So if you make a mistake, you can't correct it. Two, you can't fine tune the antenna. And three, even if you by pure luck cut it perfectly, if you change your transmitter frequency to a lower frequency, you won't have the length of an antenna to reach the correct wavelength. This is because lower frequencies have higher wavelengths, which means a longer antenna. So never buy an antenna you need to cut. All antennas you buy must be adjustable and readjustable. Then, once you have calculated the quarter wavelength of your transmitter frequency, for example, 100 MHz in this equation is 74.948 cm or 29.507 inches, and you adjust the length of the radiator from the base to the tip of a quarter wave and from the center to the ends on a dipole to match that length. For a half-wave dipole, you need to do this for both the top radiator and the bottom ground plane to be the exact same length. For a quarter wave, you only need to adjust the top radiator. You can adjust the ground planes, but it will make little difference and very rarely are these ground planes variable in length, which would mean cutting them. This is the first step, which should give you quite a big difference on your meter, but it is not the last step. Once you have adjusted the length of the antenna, you need to set the antenna up on a stand of some kind away from all buildings and metal objects, as these will interfere with the tuning process. Also, put the antenna as high up from the ground as you can safely do without having the danger of falling. Put on safety gear if you can. It could save you from serious injury even if you are just a few meters from the ground. Even if you just put on a cycling helmet and some padded clothing, it's better than nothing. For legal reasons though, I would say only do this if you are a trained professional and have the correct PPE. In other words, don't try this at home. Disclaimer in the description. Then. 
plug the output of your transmitter to the input of the meter and then run a cable from the output of the meter to the antenna. Switch the transmitter on. Ooh, baby! Don't stand near an antenna when the transmitter is on unless you want your children to be born looking like this. What? Seriously, radio waves are dangerous, so stay away. You should immediately see the measurement of power output of the transmitter on the forward needle. In this case, 4 watts. You will also see what signal is being reflected back by the antenna on the second needle called reflected. This is the indication of how much the antenna needs to be adjusted. You need at least 1 watt of transmitter power to adjust it accurately. But 4 watts is about the optimal amount. Less than 1 watt and the reflected power needle might not move enough to see the adjustments. Even if you intend broadcasting with less than 1 watt, you need to tune your antenna with at least 1 watt. Then turn the power down when you broadcast. If your transmitter does not have an output protector built in and you see a massive return signal like this, you will need to switch off the transmitter as quickly as you can to not damage it, as it might blow up while you are tuning. Then with the transmitter off, test with a multimeter to see if there is a short in the RF cable going from the meter to the antenna. If the antenna has been adjusted to the right length and there is no fault in the cable, you should not see a very high return signal. It should be medium to low. If it's still high, you might have a faulty antenna. Then with the transmitter on, make a note of the return signal level. Then switch the transmitter off and go adjust the antenna. First adjust the antenna inwards to make it shorter by just a small amount like a few millimeters or a fraction of an inch. Make a note of how much you adjusted it. Do the same for the top and bottom part of the dipole or just the top radial of the quarter wave antenna. Then go back and turn on your transmitter and look to see if the reflected signal went up or down. If it went up, you need to adjust the antenna in the opposite direction that you did, so outwards or making the antenna longer. If the reflected needle went down, yes. make a note of the new measurement, switch the transmitter off and go adjust the antenna even further in the same direction. In other words, even shorter. Keep doing this with tiny adjustments, seeing each time that the reflected power goes down more and more until after a time you check and the new reading starts to increase again. Then stop and adjust it by half that amount that you were adjusting with in the other direction towards your previous measurement that was the lowest. Repeat this adjustment of shorter and longer by smaller and smaller amounts until you've got the reflected needle to reach the lowest possible level you can. Once you have tuned the antenna to its best SWR ratio of as close to 1 to 1, then take it off the stand and install it on your radio tower or pole. Then check your SWR again when it's installed. If there is a huge change again, be sure to check the cable with a multimeter again to see if the cable is faulty. But if it's a small change, check if there is anything nearby like a metal pole or structure that can be reflecting the signal back into the antenna. Also be sure to earth the tower, your cable and the transmitter as best as you can. Finally, don't forget to put a lightning protector in to save your transmitter from lightning. And you've got a fully tuned FM antenna to broadcast with. Well done! Woo!